Hey everybody, I'm here with Florin Cushion Logan, who just won his semifinals match and is going to be playing in the finals, the very first Flesh and Blood Pro Tour. What does that mean to you to be possibly the first champion ever of Flesh and Blood? Yeah, it's a little bit unreal to say, to be honest. Uh, day one didn't go so well. Day two, I went 6-1, managed to top. So yeah, it's great to be here and great to be able to compete for the win. All right, let's talk about that win that you're going to be trying to get. You were playing Starvo. Uh, everybody's favorite deck and you're playing against chain so we've got the two last boogeymen of some of these formats and you're in a pretty unique position uh starvo if it wins the tournament will be at the living legend status and we've seen that the prize that comes along with winning this is one of those gold foiled hero cards that's textless and just says pro tour champion on it if you win this you will be the only person to ever get this card because bravo will be done what does that sound like to you yeah it sounds great it means i can be the i can have the biggest circus tent in town I can, <laughs> now it will be mine to hold forever, yeah? Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, it was a long road for you to get here. Travel-wise, testing-wise, a lot of people helped you along the way. Is there anything you want to say to some of them? Yeah, I want to thank my the, the guys I tested with. So thank you, all of them. There's so many to name. Uh, Christian Hauk, Joshua Bau, uh, Stefan, Matze, Longdao, Charlie, Michael Bonde. I'm sure I missed someone. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks a lot also to the two guys at home that didn't come that make the trip. My brother, who's a twin actually, uh, Francis and uh, Michael Valentin. Unfortunately, they couldn't make the trip, but hopefully next time they can join as well. Yeah, absolutely. One last question. How are you feeling about this matchup in the finals? Yeah, it should be fine. We did it a lot. Of, we played it a lot in testing. I think everyone expected this to be the, let's say, match of the tournament. Um, yeah, feeling confident. I'm on the play. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if you're that first Flesh and Blood Pro Tour champion. Is it going to be Florent Cushion Logan on Bravo Star of the Show, or will Pablo Pintor playing Chain be our first Pro Tour champion? Let's head down to the feature match area and find out together. And I already have talking points here. A huge distinction between Florin and the other Starvos. Look at that chess piece, Tannen. It's tectonic plating. I mean, uh, the default for so, so long. It was Feyendel Spring Tunic. That's how you do this. That is what is critical in the Starvo game plan. It's how you get those free Crown of Seeds activations. It's just a core tenant of your game plan. And Florian threw it out the window. Tectonic plating instead. And going to start things off here in what looks like the best way possible. We're going to reveal three elements. Move forward that Bravo and get a little dominate plus two and go again. As this attack comes in, I do want to point out that they're all being watched over by their hero. Look at that background. Look at those oversized cards of Bravo Star of the Show and Shane. Their heroes have their back here in the finals of this match, Brian. And look, we've got a dominated Evergreen coming in for nine on turn one. It's going to get blocked by Hal from Beyond, but some damage going through. First damage of the finals to Florin. This reminds me of exactly the start that Pablo had to wither from Isaac. Isaac had the big fuse in the beginning. Uh, followed up with the winner's well for some early damage through. And Pablo, you know, didn't really have an explosive response to it, just kind of shook it off, did his thing, didn't get phased. Now we're going to have to see if Pablo can do the same thing in this matchup and how much the equation has changed with subtle differences in Florin's deck. I do want to point out Bastion is the choice here for Florin in the shield spot. Love it. I'm, I'm just on board with Bastion again. Tan and you and I, last time we got together uh, when we did the call in Indianapolis, we spent all day talking about the difference between Bastion Rampart of the Rand said, floating back and forth. I'm a Bastion fan for life. I love, love that offhand. Yeah, I played Bastion more myself than Ramshead. Then I went back to Ramshead being the one of choice. But it, I got to say, in this matchup, the free block that can sometimes stop an entire turn from change just by giving them that one little frostbite can pay huge dividends. We, we saw Bastion in the last match function as a legitimate block five. And that was after it had already done a block two and made a frostbite earlier in the game. That kind of swing, it just stuffed it, it, it prevented one damage from an attack, put out a frostbite that stuffed a Rosetta Thorn activation. That's a tremendous swing in the tempo of the game. And it just solidifies the deal for me that Bastion is the piece you want in that offhand. Back to Pablo's first turn. We've got a Garganian Tome here adding a fourth card to his hand. Pablo, a very deliberate player here with Chain, and I've been impressed all day long watching his play, casting his play. He seems to be one of the tighter chain players I've ever seen, sequencing very, very well through the whole thing. You can tell he maps out his whole turn and then goes through it piece by piece methodically and dismantles his opponent. He's been doing it all tournament long. He's only got to do it one more time here. Yeah, we were talking with our own Matt Rogers as we got ready for this final. Uh, Pablo defeated Matt Rogers in the Swiss round. Matt said extremely impressed with Pablo. Pablo's play didn't see any faults in it whatsoever. 
and now just continue and slow and steady, find that damage output, gonna go ahead and lead with Unhollowed rights here, backed up by that chain activation. This is an attack for four here. This does have go again from Chain's ability. That first Soul Shackle made. Lots of big attacks in Florin Christian's Logan's hand. I don't think he's got a Starvo activation, so definitely maybe looking to block with one of these large attacks to get some value out of it. Yeah, you see the Oaken Old at the ready. You see a Crippling Crush. You can't use all of these, unfortunately. He's just going to go ahead, pitch the Oaken Old, activate that Crown of Seeds. Grabs a Spinal Crush, so another big attack. Looks like Heaven's Claws, Channel Lake Frigid, Spinal Crush, Crippling Crush. And those cards don't really line up all that well. So I'm expecting maybe it's time for a little bit of blocking from Florin, but looks like no. Looks like he's just going to go ahead and soak this damage here. Maybe thinking he can go ahead and fire off that Crippling Crush or the Spinal Crush on the next turn. Yeah, three accepted Florin Christian Log in here. Down to 37. Pablo's turn not near over yet, though. This on Hollow Rights does have go again. I want to talk about some of the differences between Florin's list. Three Artivore. And you might say, well, is that an aggressive card? Not really. We saw Isaac Crute use it to great effect, just bolstering defenses all last round. I don't know what Florin's configuration is for this matchup. It's very possible, you know, leaving those Artivores in the sidelines in some configurations, but I, I could see the defensive value and leaning on those a bit here as well. Yeah, we're getting the dichotomy of Artivore here. When a Guardian's playing it, sometimes it could be aggressive, but more often than not, it's there to get some filtering going, get some good defense in. Chain, it's there to kill you. It's there to facilitate those big, huge go-wide turrets. Speaking of going wide, this is a Rosetta Thorn for two and two. Florian Christian Logan, again, I'm going to accept this damage. Yeah. You've got to believe a big attack is yeah, getting Yeah, Florian is up. unquestionably setting up. He's going to pitch two blues here. He's going to go ahead and activate Tectonic Plating, and I think he's going to come in with that Spinal Crush, which is an extremely nice turn. It sets up for the future, clears out your hand, and presents a really must-deal-with attack if you're the chain player, because if you get Spinal Crush, your turn is over. So let's see if Florian sees the line the same way. Could be he just wants to go ahead and invest and do that Crippling Crush. All right, nope. It does look like we're going to get that tectonic plating activation. Seismic surge token created. There's another here blue. Another big pitch, and here comes that spinal crush. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. This demands at least some answer from Pablo, and it's a little bit too early, I think, to reach for that husk. That's what we saw Pablo do in the last game. When spinal crush came to play, he said it was time for carrying husk. I think, should this have been one turn later, that's probably the path we'd see Pablo take again. But right now, I think you just want to line up some blocks and try and put together a decent return hand. Yeah, we talk a lot about what's huskable, what's not. Sometimes as early as turn two here against Starvo can be because these abilities, I'm sorry, these, uh, these on-hit abilities are so impactful. They're so big. And even one like Spinal Crush going into the one shackle turn can have some implications because if the cards lose and can't gain go again out of chain, that's going to stymie a lot of your turn and a lot of your potential damage to get through, and you really don't want to fall too far behind early in the game here because then Starbo could really flex his muscles and just tempo you out of this game. Look at this hand from Pablo. This is about the third time I've caught him with a hand like this. There's two belittles and a minnowism already in hand. So we talked about Pablo's commitment to the minnowism belittle package, running six belittles in this chain list, and it's a card that's hotly debated among chains. Some chains don't run any belittle minnowisms. Pablo very committed to the package, though, and has, of course, those two blues and the three red minnowisms to go alongside those six belittles. Yeah, one of the games that I did of his earlier, he was, uh, I called it belittle minnowism flooded. Yeah. He just was pitching them to them, going get more, pitching to them again. I've I seen it happen a few times for Pablo, but he plays through that scenario so well. He finds ways to get damage out of those turns. And you see here, you can also just go ahead and commit those on defense. It is going to be a sizable block here on the Spinal Crush. Pablo saying, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead, commit some defensive resources. I can have a nice medium attack on my next turn, and we'll keep building towards that large Soul Shackle turn as the game goes on. Now, since it's so early in the game, and like you said, we're not banishing too many cards here for Soul Shackles, is that why Pablo is a little more committed to being defensive? I think so. I, I think it's just hard to get a lot of offensive output in these scenarios. You just want to go ahead, get what you can. You know, if you're putting any pressure on your opponent at all, you're pretty happy with it. And that was a pretty key banish there. Hitting that ghostly visit is nice. It gives you a little bit of extra oomph on this turn. This probably would have just been a raw Rosetta Thorn activation should this not been found. But now we're splitting four physical with the two physical of Rosetta Thorn. 
that's okay. You can tolerate that, presenting six at your opponent, and at least ask them a question. If you just go ahead and go in with that two Rosetta Thorn attack, you're really not doing much. That influences the game. They can just go ahead, you know, activate Crown of Seeds, clean up their hand a little bit, and you really haven't gotten far at all. Let's see how far he's going to get. Florian Christian Logan deciding, do I take this four generic damage? Or do I want to trade maybe a card for this, plus a crown activation, lots of options. I think it matters the context of his hand. If he's Always. already got a Starbo Always. activation, you're, you're less likely to activate Crown of Seeds, but maybe you just want to gain that life. We'll have to see. That's the main flow of Flesh and Blood 10, and it's all about the give and take. Everything you give on defense, you don't get on offense, and you have to always be thinking, what do I want to commit to my defense here, or do I have a bigger pop back that my opponent will not be able to deal with? I think what you're seeing here is you're seeing the gravity of the situation really Absolutely. show itself in these players. Not that they were playing super breakneck speed before, but you're seeing the real deliberate, I'm going to really think about all my plays. I don't want to take an extra point of damage. I don't want to miss anything in these games because this is the biggest game I will ever play in my life. And, and here's this spot, Tannen, where, <laughs> okay, Stalagmite's blocking two, right? So it's preventing two damage. No chance. That Frostbite is going to go ahead and stop this Rosetta Thorn from coming in. That's actually a block for four. And how many times does a Rampart of the Rams head have to block throughout the game to make that kind of output by its defensive stats? It just has to be in, in combat over and over and over. Stalagmite in one fell swoop basically gains Florian four life there. Also, it's a big deal that it got to happen for free yeah. as well. Oh, absolutely. And that means a sizable hand as things get passed back to Florian. Going to go ahead and make another Seismic Surge, activates that first Seismic Surge. Big pitch here. Not just and a big pitch here. This is a big swing here as well. Brian, this is a crippling crush. Uh, as you can see on your screen over here, huge on-hit effect. If this deals four more damage to the hero. They're going to discard two cards at random. And, and now again, you have to ask that question. Is it, is it husk time? Is it time for the carrying husk? Because then you can preserve a three-card hand if you commit your husk. And that the output of a three-card hand is going to be very different to what is essentially the output of a one-card hand. But Pablo's card's not lining up exactly how he wants and is just fine committing to defense here letting a little damage slip through, and it, it's not so bad when your opponent doesn't have the Starvo activation on top of it, right? Yeah. It's just one attack, you can soak up a little damage, and again, come back with that small turn. And we saw a pretty decent small turn from Pablo last go around, four and two physical, nothing to sneeze at from a one card hand. Yeah, Pablo's gonna play a lot of small ball early in the game, his first turn, second turn, third turn, until those shackles start kind of going off, and yep. then you'll see those turns where we've seen Pablo as soon as, you know, sometimes shackle three or four, where he's attacking you four, five different ways, for varying amounts, arcane here, arcane there, lots of stuff that's hard to deal with out of any deck, and especially out of Starvo. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be just Seeping Shadows hit with those Soul Shackles on this go around. Of course, Seeping Shadows a little bit more expensive. I doubt we're gonna see much value out of it here. I expect it'll hover in that Banish Zone for a little while. It is just gonna be a Rosetta Thorn with go again from Chain, but I expect this is just the raw two, and, and this is the real down downturn that I'm not so sure Pablo is going to be satisfied with. When he presented six on the last turn, he got a very valuable resource from his opponent, got the first stalagmite activation. That's a big deal. But this, where you're just presenting two, it's so easy for Florin to just go, whatever, dude. I, I don't care at all. And then to come back with a really, really big salvo on his turn. Yeah, I mean, there's options here. You can take it, just go to 29. If you don't like the card in your arsenal, you've got Crown of Seeds. I think I see a Starvo activation in hand. I saw Pulse and a couple other cards, so yeah, this might be a big, big turn. Floor is just reaching for the pen, going to take the damage, and that tells me there's probably something significant coming back. I do think you're right on that Pulse Reed Tannen. Yeah, another point going to actually go to Pablo Pintor here as well, that Seeping Shadows is still in that Bandage Zone, so that Blood Debt, you always see it give. You got to notice also when it takes. And it, it does. It gives and takes. That's the nature of Chain as a hero. It's give and take all day long. You're battling with that Blood Debt throughout, and there is that Pulse going to go ahead and create the Starvo activation. Seismic Surge token's gonna pop here. Yeah, a lot of resources available for Florin on this turn. He's already been through a few of the giant attacks already here, so let's see if this is just one of those generic evergreens or something like that, or if it's one of those big signature attacks. Yeah, it looks like it is just gonna be a big evergreen here. It's like it's gonna be for eight. Just eight, just eight dominate go again, Tan, and that's all. No big deal. Back I bet over. it's a big deal to Pablo, though. Yeah, it is a big deal to Pablo. He's this is the look. spot, though. You know, you talk about the on-hit effects and how important they are, right? This is the moment 
where you can just go ahead and say, uh, I, I can handle this, I can soak this damage. Falling to 20, your husk is still ready in the future, you can find nice blocks at that point. So we'll see if Pablo is ready to start firing off a little bit of his own. It really depends so much on what's in hand right now. Getting to block with a Rift Bind here, a card that from hand this early in the game, not a ton of value, so he's just going to go ahead and soak up some damage here as well. So he's going to draw that, drop down to 28. And this looks like, well, we have two pulses in hand. Yeah. So this is going to be an eight power cold hammer. This is a big follow up. And this was disguised well by Florin, did not resolve that second pulse for the Starvo activation, meaning there's no way Pablo could have known this was coming. At that eight frosty hammer, that'll mess up your turn quick, Tannen. Yeah, it's really hard to not take damage from this and get one of those frostbites. Yeah, and now with Pablo at 22 after that evergreen, this eight representing Pablo falling down to 14, seeping shadows down to 13. And again, is it carrying husk time? You have to always ask that question. It's, it looks like it's not, I was gonna say it's getting close. Not yet, not yet. It's gonna go ahead and fall to 14 is Pablo. That is a very, very dangerous life total for a chain player to go down to. It is, and you know, Florin's going to see that and know there's some potential that that carrying husk just isn't going to get value this game. If that happens, disaster for Pablo. Absolute disaster. There's that tome. So perfectly timed again from Pablo. This Incredible is actually, ad. This is also a big play too here because he did get the frostbite. He waited for the frostbite to resolve here because he's going to be able to overpay anyway for this. So this actually means the frostbite's not going to be there for his turn. Great uh, turn. This is the second round in a row where we saw Pablo on his opponent's turn activate those spellbound creepers. Go ahead, play Tome from Arsenal. Last game, it was the difference maker. It was the reason Pablo won. And let's see if it holds up again against this Starville player. I've, I've heard Tarek Patel and Matt Rogers really, really sing the praises of Tome of Fiondel in chain. He said, we got there. We see that other people have gotten there. This card has really been carrying its weight in this. It's a card that I almost didn't even have on my radar coming in this tournament into this deck. You know, And I've played a decent bit of chain. Nope. And Matt Rogers was saying the B word around that card. B -b 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 broken Tannen. He thinks it's that good in the chain setup. And look at how good Pablo's turn has gotten here. Art of War at the ready as well as Rift Bind, Ghostly Visit. This could be the big output that Pablo has been patiently waiting for. Perfectly biding his time. Shadow Puppetry as well. So much alliteration there as well that turn. I'm surprised you got through it. I'm in the zone right now, Tannen. I'm in the zone. I'm in the flesh and blood zone. Well done, Brian. Focused. Moisturized. And, <laughs> and this is where you're going to see why Pablo is in this final. This is where you're going to see why Pablo is the chain player that made it the furthest in this tournament. He's going to be a little deliberate, but he's going to map out this turn perfectly. Yeah, what Reveal. color is that minnowism is my question. Is that the blue minnowism that Pablo needs to really get the resources on this turn? Oh, he's teasing me with it. I can see the picture, but I, I can't know, see the so color. So close, so close. And you're going to see Pablo deliberate as always, but... If anyone can figure out how to maximize this turn, you've got to believe it's him. He's been doing it all day long, been impressive from start to finish in all of his games. He's been on the back foot this entire game of this final, but is this his turn to pivot? I, th I think it is blue, Tenet. I think it's the resources that Pablo needs to supercharge this turn. And I, I don't think he's frustrated with this turn. I think he's saying, I've got the nuts right now. I have massive damage output. And if I figure out how to do this, this could really spell trouble for Florin. All right, we're going to start a turn off with Art of War here. It's go time. Hold on to your butts. These are the turn. These are the turns okay. that chain players' I, dreams are and made And I was of. wrong, Tenen. That, that's red minnowism. So we're a little resource light right now. It's going to be really big what we find with this draw step. I think he drew a blue here I think with the you're right. I think there's blue shrill of skull form, and that could be a big difference maker for this turn. We're getting quite excited here in the booth, and Brian and I need to be careful with the volume of our voice. We don't want the players to be able to hear us here, so. I would love to just be screaming right now, Tannen, but I will, I will do my best to stay reserved, stay calm. I'm telling you just as much as I'm telling myself. Because I'm, I'm the same. I'm waiting with bated breath. I am on the edge of my actual seat here. We've got these great Secret Lair Legend Star Wars Studios chairs, but I'm only using the edge. Ghostly Visit going to go ahead, push five damage through here, getting the go again from Chain, pumped by Art of War. This is just the start of a very strong turn from Pablo. Let's see what Florin has. And uh, you always have to wonder when you're in the Chain seat, is this the moment where my opponent has Blizzard? Can I play through Blizzard? Can I find a way to keep the turn going? Should they have that key, key instant? Let's see what Florin has as a defensive setup here. Pablo's already had that happen to him here 
in this top eight, and he's been up to the task as well. Yes, he has. The Spellbound Creeper is getting activated yet again. Yeah. Looks like an instant speed, shadow, puppetry shadow puppetry. Sure. Yeah. It's gonna get, that's going to refresh the action points. So there's actually two now for Shane. There's that shrill that we were talking about. Some resources garnered. This is the start of a massive, massive swing here. Another rift bind for five. Yep. And there's a lot more where this came from. Oh, not done yet. Uh, definitely going to be more attacks. Another action point at the ready. The patience of Pablo Pintor is being paid off here in this final. You saw him take a bunch of damage, soak it up, trade cards early to stay at a certain life total, stay up just a little bit. Yep, that's actually attacking for six with Art of War. And he's being paid back in spades with this turn. You another know, another Rift Find at the ready, too. I mean, this turn is nowhere near done for Pablo. And Florin has to decide, is this a moment where Florin says, my hand is so good, I can just go ahead and soak this up. Let's also talk about the defensive options available to Florin here. Crater Fist untouched. Tectonic plating, a big shift, a huge shift from the Feyendel Spring Tunic brought by basically every other Starvo in the field to block, ready to go, battle-worn. I mean, that's going to stick around no matter what. So that's a big difference for most Starvo configurations, to say nothing of the Bastion. So six very free block available from that defensive setup. Don't forget also it's been saving a little bit of resources here and there, making the seismic surge tokens enabling big, and, big and turns. they've mattered. They've mattered, Tan, and they've, they've made turns more efficient. And I, I think... <laughs> There's a lot of shifts that are going to come after this Pro Tour, without question. There's been so many breakout decks, so many breakout pieces of technology. Uh, I, I think Tectonic Plating and Starvo could very well be one of them. It's in the conversation for sure, and it's the one you should probably be starting the conversation with after the so. performance we've seen this week. That and Shock Charmers are the two big ones that I will not be leaving home without. All right, it looks like we're starting to figure this out. It looks like Seed's activation here, so we've got a prevention of one floating. Yeah, and there's a fuse in Florence hand. I'm fairly confident I saw all three elements. So now we're going to see if we're going to go ahead and commit some defensive resources here. So this looks like a block for six. Correct. Along yep. with the frostbite attitude, maybe that'll mess up the math of Pablo. Yeah, full six, going to soak up everything. Pablo with two resources floating. Plenty of action points. He is resource flooded right now. Looks like it he's is. going to go ahead and play that rift bind. This is also coming in for five. Doesn't get the buff of Shadow Puppetry that the last one got, so only for five on this one. Correct. That Frostbite has been dealt with. And ten. is this it for those Spellbound Creepers? That's a very critical tool that I believe Pablo is not going to get to head to the next turn with. It does look like this should be it for the Spellbound Creepers, but I will say this, the value that was garnered off of them this huge. game. Oh, huge, huge value, without question. Yeah, it does look like Florin's going to go down to 19. Remember when this game was a lot different as long, I mean, as short as just a turn ago, that's the power of chain, and we're only into the fourth shackle here, but... A little bit of blood debt from that Seeping Shadows. That does seeping, still have that Carrion Husk at the ready. Yeah, that same seeping, seeping Shadows has been ticking away this game at the life total of Pablo Pintor. Getting that pitch stack just right. And let's see what was in the hand for Florence Christian Judge Loggins. Just checking in, saying, sorry, no more Spellbound Creepers for you. Yeah. Now, I think we do have a big attack on here. It does look like it's going to be generic damage, but still, a lot of it hard to block. Yeah, a little Starvo fusion. Every Starvo activation from here is so critical. Each one gets you that one step closer to hoisting that trophy. Step one is going to be that big Earth attack that so often leads off the Starvo turns. It feels like evergreen break ground. They've defined Starvo output in this tournament. It used to be Autumn's Touch, but these two... Elemental attacks really stepped in nicely yeah, to pour, fill the void left by Autumn's Touch. Pour one out for Autumn's Touch. It was a real one. It carried this deck, but we've seen the power of Starvo. You know, a little bit of a downgrade with these Evergreens and Break Grounds, but they've still been, as you said, carrying their weight all weekend long. Is it going to carry Florin Christian Loggin through in this final? He's hoping so. It's an attack for eight. Pablo down to 17. I mean, is this the time where the Husk has to come out to play, Brian? I... <laughs> We're certainly close. I mean, you're, you're at least taking five damage here if you don't commit that husk. That means you're falling down to 12, barring any more of those Tome of Feyendel shenanigans. So I, I think 
either this or the follow-up from that Winter's Whale is where you want to go ahead and commit those resources. Yeah, still with a full-on skull cap, still got full-on grasp, a card from hand. Yeah, good resources left, honestly, over on Pablo's turn. Has used those Spellbound Creepers, but full skull cap, full grasp, Carrion Husk at the ready. That's a lot of damage prevented. And this game is starting to get into its late stages, so you got to feel pretty good about that if you're Pablo. Yeah, still got at least 10 health over here, banked up, ready to go at the least. You know, they got the cards in hand. I've seen Eclipse in hand, I believe, along with some other stuff. So. Yeah, I, I think the hand is Eclipse, double Vexing Malice, and then I believe Unhollowed, right? So I think we're completely resource stocked. And what that means is Pablo's able to hit a good set of Soul Shackles here. The damage output could go through the roof. All right, it does look like this attack is Huskable, so two damage will get through. It was the time. Husk had to go ahead and get in on the action, and that is going to allow these other two pieces. Really clean blocks there from Pablo. I, I agree entirely with the way that turn was played. And this is just a, a good example as well of, of the methodicalness of Pablo. Yeah, he took his time with those, but then the rest of the turn was mapped out. Yeah. There was the immediate block of both the equipment. He knew what was coming. You see in the mastery of his deck and what's going to be happening against them. Both of these players showing off just how good they really are. Here's that reveal. Two chain. So far, no hits. A complete blank. And we saw this oh, happen to no, Pablo Brian. in the semi. Soul Shackle 4, Soul Shackle 5 were so bad for Pablo. They were absolutely abysmal. And now, back to back matches again, getting the raw deal on those Soul Shackles. That is so big here. No extra free cards for him this turn. So he's going to be only working with the four cards in his hand, just like everybody else's normal hero. But Chain really, really needs those. I do see an eye in Florent Christian's hand as well, so I expect his next turn to be very powerful here. So if Pablo doesn't present that strong of a turn here, this might be the biggest turning point of the game. I don't see how he can, Tan. I, I just don't think this turn's going to line up well. I mentioned that hand absolutely loaded with blues, so it has to find some way to just get this turn a little bit wider. And there you are going to see that Eye of Ophidia pitch. That's going to allow some scrying first, as well as this Crown of Seeds activation. So it's going to go ahead and scry. Look to see what card he wants to add to his hand here. Yeah, and if he can find the missing piece for a Starvo activation, like you mentioned, huge swing available here. And if there's an on hit, that just might be the first step towards crowning our Pro Tour champion. Yeah, if you were to say, it oh, looks like just an Evergreen. Let's say if you were to add something, say like Oaken Old here. It's, it's just an Evergreen tenant, but that is a complete set of elements for Starvo. Now we have Lightning, we have Earth, and we have Ice. And that means we can go ahead and push some damage with that break ground. Extra card left over here if he wants to block this turn. He's got a prevention shield up. He's still got two free blocks with his equipment here yep. as well. Just matters how much he wants to preserve that life total. Now, this is only an attack for two. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem for Pablo on this turn is that he's not really presenting anything worth blocking thus far. I mean, that bounding demigon is basically irrelevant. It, it just has no on hit, just a small amount of damage. Now we're going to go ahead and follow it up with the chain activation and see if we can go ahead and produce something worthwhile. Going to pitch a Vexing Malice, as we mentioned, blue Vexing Malice, and it's time for Rosetta Thorn. Now that is two and two, so nice little swing here off the weapon. It's going to have go again as well on the back of the chain ability. Two floating resources here for Floor. One of them's going to be used for the boots to prevent at least one of that damage. Yep, see, down it looks to three like he's damage, gonna take and he's still going to take it. Florin has now committed to the idea that he wants to clop, clap back with this big Bravo hand. And it looks like we're going to have an arsenal and then a pass from Pablo here. Well, maybe there's, there's still technically a go again here, but... Could be some follow-up. At the very least, probably want to use that Grasp. Yeah, and that is going to be the play. That's going to produce a Rune Chant. Head into the next turn with that at the ready. Yep. Gary and Huss going to do a little damage, and now this is a scary spot if you're Pablo. You're expecting so much damage to come through. Down to 14. This is where you start to get in the danger zone. These oh, yeah. dominated attacks start to represent huge, huge chunks of your life total. Your carrion husk is gone. You've got two block left on these equipment, but both players are at 15 right now. That Arcanine Skullcap cannot block. Yeah, at least not on the first go around. Gonna go ahead, show that Bravo Fusion. Expecting Evergreen here. Beautiful Evergreen, gonna try and push some damage through. Looks like an eight power dominated go again Evergreen. This is gonna get followed up by it looks like a cold hammer as well so not only are you worried about this attack you're worried about what's coming behind this more damage frostbites just not only attacking you your life total but kind of choking on your resources a little bit too slowing you down making it harder because every card you block with now means less resources less things to use that frostbite added is going to be huge you know what though 
Pablo's hand is good. It looks like it's double mauve skies, minnowism, bounding demigod. So if those soul shackles finally stop betraying Pablo, if you can get some help from that giant chain looming over his shoulder and just get the perfect setup, you could see a world where Pablo just tanks this damage. And I that is going to be the gonna play. Do. He's going to reach for the pen. It looks like he's going to take all eight here, falling to six. And he knows the follow-up is going to be a cold four, unless, unless, yeah, look at this, Tannen. Tectonic plane going to make a seismic surge, and the play oh, is going to be Channel Lake Frigid. And that is a huge difference for this next turn for Pablo. And you saw a little bit of a drop of the head there. I think Pablo was 100% ready to play through that cold four knew how he was going to sculpt a turn through that. Channel Lake Frigid is a different beast. That is a thing that can really slow down Chain. Uh, I did catch a glimpse of the hand from Florence Logan. I did see an Oak and Old, a couple of element pieces, and an Art of War. So if this isn't a huge turn... And, and look Pablo. at the reveal here. Two Bounding Demigon and an Unhallowed Rites. Should that Channel Lake Frigid not have been deployed, it would have just been all lights green for Pablo with a Minnowism a double mauve sky's hand would have gotten so so wide and i think there's still going to be decent output even given that channel lake frigid but a, a small fraction of what would have been possible should not that key answer have been available for florin on that turn it looks like the mavian skies is going to get played into this bounding demigon for four yeah and you've played two zero cost cards and you've used two resources already how devastating is that to your output Channel Lake Frigid, not only super powerful, but so good in matchups like these. Briar, Lexi, Chain, anything where you're trying to put multiple cards onto the combat chain, do a whole bunch of activations of abilities, get fancy, as we like to say. Channel Lake Frigid is here to say, nah, -uh, you got to pay the tax. Yeah. And here's that Art of War that I was talking about. There's going to be two resources floating here. What's he going to do? It looks like he might banish a card from hand. Yep, expect to draw two here as well as supercharge those defenses a little bit. Has a blink in hand alongside what looks like a frost fang. And a winter's bite. So not incredible defensive options here. I, not incredible offensive well, not options Not incredible either. offensive options. I, I agree with you, Tannen. However, however, two ice carts. And that, with the Channel Lake Frigid in play, can be an absolute game breaker. If you can head into the next turn with both those ice cards, a place to put them, and keep that Channel Lake Frigid around for another turn... You might just be able to blood debt out your opponent. Uh, tectonic plating showing its power. Yeah, yeah with that. that's the clear path to pitching. You're able to pitch your first ice card to tectonic plating, pitch the second one to Winter's Well, and two turns of Channel Lake Frigid. I, I don't know. I don't know that Pablo can play through that. The question is, though, is there going to be a block here? And the problem is the third card in hand is a blink. So if you don't commit those ice cards, you're not blocking. You're just taking the damage. And you have to say, can Pablo kill me? And it looks like that's exactly what Florian's going to do here. Going to let that damage come through. Take four. Going to go ahead and make two rune chants here. Yeah, the first one was picked off by the Null Rune Boots as well. So it is going to be the four physical that gets through. Yep. The rune chant from before not going to happen. All right, we're going to have a chain activation here. Shackle yep. number six. And like I said, despite this being a Channel Lake Frigid turn, good output from Pablo. Good output. It needs to be great output. I think if Pablo can't cross the bridge to presenting lethal here, there's a big problem looming, and it's the second turn played under that Channel Lake Frigid. Yeah, Pablo impressive all day long with how he's been playing around everything from his opponents, playing through things like Channel Lake Frigid, through you know the, the best things that his opponents can do. Just really impressive stuff. Yeah, Pablo going to pitch a Bounding Demigon to go ahead and play a second Bounding Demigon. Has go again from Chain. Those two rune chants coming in. Yeah, looks like they're going to be prevented by that blink that can't block. Looks like that and three damage, damage is coming through. Yeah, Florin is committed to this idea that he wants to keep that Channel Lake Frigid around. Yeah, it's a rough spot, too. A turn that you're using Art of War to buff up some of your defenses that you're not actually going to be blocking. And yeah, those draws were a little rough, and Unhallowed Rights here going to be the last volley on this turn. Not lethal. But Florin, I mean, you've come this far. You basically have to say, all right, I'm committed to this plan. I need Channel Lake Frigid to carry me through here. And I, I expect Florin to just take this four damage, fall down to a very, very frightening four life. Yeah, this is not a spot that he really wanted to be in. I, th I think he may have underestimated the output that Pablo could, could have. I agree with you. I wholeheartedly agree with you. And I think that blink was such an impediment on how good this hand could have been. It only takes one block. If you just had anything else in hand 
I think Florin just pulls away in this spot. Now it's anyone's game. And how fitting that our first Pro Tour comes down to these tight, tight margins. And I, this game is not decided. It's not clear to me who has the edge here. I find myself just wanting to sit and watch and see what happens. I understand, Tenon. I, I am understand. so riveted by this game. It's been unreal. The, the entire top eight, all of our players here should be really proud of the accomplishments they've had in getting this far. The games were amazing all day today. And we're finishing off of one of the best ones. Can't wait to see how this finishes. Pablo attacking for four. This is a hollowed right here. You can see the the frustration coming yeah, through and, the floor in here. Look, there's something to be said for deviating from a plan when you really have to. Does it, look like he's going to soak up one of it. But Florin is committed to this idea. Going to go ahead, do some defense with that tectonic plating, and now we're going to move to Florin's turn with two ice cards. Yeah, tectonic plating really showing its value here all day long in this top eight, but this is a big thing. We used to have to go through hoops as Starvo to get the second ice card in the pitch zone for turns to keep Channel Lake Frigid around. Tectonic plating actually just does it really well while also kind of buffing up some of your attacks, helping you out, like doing something positive. I've gone as far as breaking my crater fist for no value just yep. to keep Channel Lake around for an extra turn. Right there with you, Tannen, and this is going to let Florin do it cleanly, is going to present this Frosty 4 with Pablo at 5, can choose to just soak this up, has Art of War at the ready, so can play with a 4-card hand, say, this is it, this is for all the marbles. I know that one carrying husk damage is coming, but I think I can get this done on this turn. Or we can line up some blocks. We do have available, of course, that Grasp of the Arc Knight could soak up a little damage. You can combine that with a three block. You could find yourself in a really nice spot here. I don't see one in hand, though. I think those are all two blocks, and that complicates this decision a little bit. Yeah, and you got to remember that carrying husk still there, still ticking away. You can't get too flippy with your life total here. You know, you don't want to go down to one or two where just any turns where nothing happens, you're going to die to your own blood debt. So you got to be careful. Here, it's a tightrope that you got to walk as these chain players and these chain decks. It does look like it's going to be a full block. Okay, it does have the three block there. Bounding Demigon coming through. And now going to have to play another turn under the punishment of that Channel Lake Frigid. Another. Spinal Crush, Art of War, Shock Strikers, and Break Ground. Oh, this looks Here like comes okay. a critical. Oh, that's another Art of War gone. Another Shrill gone. Go so we've okay. got, what, three hits here? Okay, I mean, look, if, if I'm Pablo... I'm pretty happy with this. Good enough, good yeah. enough. I mean, things have gone so bad for Pablo been way on worse. the banishes. Yeah. So there's some options here. It's just that Channel Lake Frigid. Does Pablo have the blue resources to play through these cards? Have Tough to put together a big Art of War turn while you're under that Channel Lake Frigid, of course, is going to cost an additional resource. Looks like Belittle... Maw of Skies, Art of War, Arsenal card as well. Yeah, we don't know what the Arsenal card is here. Three Blood Debt cards available to Pablo, three cards at hand. And if, if you're Pablo here, your goal, I, I don't think your goal is to win here. I think that's a tall, tall ask. I think your goal is to demand cards from Florin's hand and set up for the next turn. If you do that successfully and you know you don't have to fear damage coming back your way, you can maybe go ahead and arsenal that Art of War and set up for a huge turn with your seven Soul Shackles ready to go. Speaking of Soul Shackles, number seven getting activated here. Going to give this Ghostly Visit go again. So this is the first attack of the turn, the first step towards either winning this turn or pushing it to possibly winning the I, next turn. I'm just going to say if... if Florin gets risky here and chooses to fall to one. Art of War is at the ready. So let's just keep that in mind. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Florin knows there's got to be some blocks basically right off the bat. But I wanted to mention it as a possibility. I was going to say, are we down to the last Art of War in the deck as well? Like, wasn't there one revealed and one played already, if I remember correctly? It's I, been a long day. I think that's correct, but do not quote me on that. So would we'll be playing around the last one. I mean, both players are playing Art of War. There's been a bunch of this in this game. I might be remembering the wrong player, but... If that's true, that is something that could possibly decide this Pro Tour. Yeah, no Arsenal, so Crown of Seed's not ready to go. It looks like Florian's just going to line up a block here. Does Starting look like we're going to go ahead. Okay, we're going to start with some resources. Going to start with an Art of War. There's so many Art of Wars. Just Art of Wars back and forth. And it's funny, because I feel like Art of War sort of slipped out of favor for a moment. And now here in the finals, a card that has defined so much of the early days of Flesh and Blood back in the limelight, proving its worth as both a defensive and an offensive option. Just Utterly beautiful card. Utterly useful card. One of the best generics in the entire game. Huge fan of this card, and it's getting its time in the sun yet again. I mean, like you said, I felt like it disappeared completely 
for a while, the sides chain. Chain has always been the bastion of oh, Art yeah. of War. But yep. Yeah, but it used to be a huge part of Katsu decks. You know, you just saw it everywhere, and it has sort of tempered what it does a little bit, but here we're really seeing it shine as a defensive tool, and I, I love the versatile uses of Art of War. Ghostly Visit for four is the presentation here from Pablo. So Florin deciding blocks, presumably has buffed them with that Art of War, gonna give all defensive plus one. The end of the turn, break ground plus Crater Frisk gonna block the full four here. And now, we're out of armor on Florin's side. Well, this, this, this block hasn't resolved just yet. There's still that Art of War. Okay, looks like Vexing Malice, okay. That block yeah, a little, a little arcane damage here to start the chain. Card that served him really well in his win over Isaac Krut. Uh, very timely Vexing Malice, be able to attack two different ways, damage from physical and from arcane. Yeah. Isaac had set up a really good defense to possibly get him one more turn in the game, and Vexing Malice shut that door and put Pablo into the finals. Is Vexing Malice also going to help him shut the door on this finals and put him as a Pro Tour champion? Yeah, and, and Florian just looks like he's going to take this, going to let this go through. Prevents one with the Null Rune boots, but it looks like this one is going to go unblocked. That means Florian going to fall to three, and it looks like Pablo is playing towards that one critical turn, trying to get Art of War into the arsenal and produce that final push. However, Florin's gonna have something to say about that. It does look like, I think this is the end of the turn for Pablo, it does look like he just arsenaled. Yeah, and there's a big deal here going on with this Banish Zone. Three damage heads Pablo's way. You go, oh no, damage, that sucks. Hold on. Arcanite Skullcap back online. Pablo yeah. falling to a lower life total, getting one additional block, and that could be critical should Winter's Whale be the attack from Florin on this turn. I think Florin wants to attack for four and wants to get a card into Arsenal. No, it's going to be bigger than that. It's going to be break ground as the attack. This looks like a red break ground as well. This is a seven damage. Yeah, but good blocks at the ready for Pablo, and now Pablo is going to come back with two cards in hand, seven cards being banished from that Soul Shackle, and Art of War at the ready. Brian, no card in Arsenal for, for Floor and Christian Login here. He's gonna have to, not ready. Yeah, he's going to have to block with just the cards in his hand, just the resources he has for Null Rune Boots. This is it, Tannen. This is this it. This is, is the this last is turn. The pro Tour. This will define our first ever Flesh and Blood Pro Tour champion. Let's see who's going to do it here. Oh, we've got another Hal for Beyond. We've got a Bounty Timmy Gone. We've got... Another hit here. Any more? The last card. Another bounty Demi Gun. That's key. This a is second probably going to be enough. Do we have enough resources to attack enough times here? You can see the end in sight. This is the last turn of the Pro Tour. Either Pablo wins here or he dies to his own blood debt. Only four cards in hand for Florin. One of them is that winner's grasp. A block three critical in this scenario. But Shadow Puppetry is going to lead off We're gonna for Pablo. We're going to start with Shadow Puppetry here. Looks like it's going to be followed up by an unhallowed rights from, from Banish. This has go again and plus one power. Three resources added. Guns Critical down to blue two. there, Tanning. Huge Critical blue. blue. This looks like an attack for five. Five damage headed Florin's way. Can he find the blocks to survive facing that wide battlefield that Chain is so, so good at? Already has go again on this unhallowed rights. You know you have go again coming from the Chain ability. Any other ways that Chain can find Go Again could spell disaster. And we know that Art of War is at the ready with resources already pitched. Brian, I don't know if Starvo is going to find its way out of this. I think Chain is finally going to bring home a big trophy. Two cards already committed from Florin. Two blocks. Two cards left. Is this the moment where Pablo wants to go to that Art of War? Do you want to force the one damage already at this point? Good for you, Pablo. Take your time. Yes, figure this out. It is time for Art of War plus one. Plus one. Plus this one. That's going to force through one damage. What's the other mode? I'm expecting go again. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing go again. And that one damage gets through. Florin falls to two. Two cards in hand. Two instances of go again. Tannen, I think this is it. I think there's three attacks lined up from Pablo with everything available here, and that will spell doom for Florence Pro Tour 1. Here's attack number one. It's Bounding Demigon. It's going to get buffed up by this Art of War. This is an attack for four. That's I, lethal. This is lethal through... A, oh, this is going to be... I think this is going to be too much. It does it look like that's going to be it. It does it. Pablo Pintor is your first flesh and blood Pro Tour champion. Chain has... Risen to the mountaintop. It has climbed all the way to the peak. And Pablo 
Pintor is your champion, the first one ever in flesh and blood. Chain finally brings home that big trophy. What a Pro Tour final, Tan, wow. and that came down to the last second. Wow. That Channel Lake Frigid, I mean, Florin had it all figured out, right? Found the second ice card, had ways to pitch it, and it just seemed like it was going to be absolutely stifling to Pablo's offense, but he found a way. He persevered. He found the key resources after being betrayed time after time by those soul shackles. Finally found one that cooperated, put the bounding demigods into the banish zone, and became our first flesh and blood Pro Tour champion. I think that turn is a perfect microcosm of how his entire tournament and his entire top eight went. Every time I watched him, I was more and more impressed with how he played and how he sequenced everything with Chain. Probably one of the most complicated decks in the history of flesh and blood. You always saw him, hey, I'm gonna take my time, take a deep breath, I'm gonna figure out this turn, and I'm gonna get the most from every single card, and he got the most from this tournament. He is our champion.